experience this day Lord to fellowship with you this morning we are so thankful Lord for your blessings upon our life Lord and the victory that you win for us every day we thank you oh God for the great things that you have done and the greater things that you do we thank you Lord for the things that you have done the things you are doing and the things that you do 
we are grateful Lord because you know Lord that you make us victorious we want to pray and thank God Lord thank you Lord for our brother Caleb today is his fifth birthday we pray that Lord you bless him mightily let your spirit Lord endow him Lord and lead him Lord as he grows may he come to know you and let your house be his resting place and dwelling place we thank you Lord we pray commit in the service Lord yeah. may you bless us bless the offering and everything that takes place here may you lead us in everything in Jesus name amen shall we please be seated there are a uh, number of song requests I, I request that when you are invited please make it brief for us the first is from brother Emmanuel Nyametia says I want to express my gratitude to God in singing let's give him a clap of offering Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grace to bear. What a privilege to carry. Let's give her a clap of it. God bless you, church. Please, I want to thank the good Lord. He's been good to me. Amen.
prosper. Yes, I want to send to our prayer meeting. Amen. Even in death, we are still victorious. I want us to encourage ourselves with this song. In Kunim Day, Wahoma Wona, Fortran, Jesus, Nani Mojano, Ayewona, Akocha. Encourage yourself. Oh, in Kunim Day, Wahoma Wona, Fortran, Fortran, Jesus, Nani Mojano, Ayewona. Josephine and Sister Promise, we would like to thank God for bringing to us another milestone for Kali.
bless you. He number 296. How sweet the name of Jesus now.
Thank you this morning, oh God, for the very gift of life. Heavenly Father, that we could leave our various homes to be here, Lord, to come and serve and worship you. Lord God, even as we have gathered together, I pray that, Lord, take every formalism out of it, and may we see that we are in the presence of the Most High God. I pray that, Lord, as individuals, cause us to reach out to you, Heavenly Father, nobody came to you and went back the same. Even as we reach out to you, may you in your mercy, Lord, meet the need of every individual heart, every soul that is, Lord, represented today in your divine presence. We pray that may you come and take total control of the whole service. Let all things be done to uplift your name. We thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Shall be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
We want to welcome everyone this morning to wa the service. Wa wa and especially we want to welcome the visitors in our midst. Amen. Uh, we know today we're having a dedicational service. For the baby, uh, the daughter of our brother Aaron and sister Grace. We want to welcome uh, the family. That are represented here to come and support uh, our brother and sister. Amen. Amen. We want to listen to this announcement before we have the dedicational service. The Trusty Board reminds the church of the offering towards the expansion project. As well as also the I uh, remind the church of the welfare fund. These are very two important things that uh, we should just all take note of. At the end of the service today, the uh, collection books will be at the exit uh, for us to take a love offering uh, for our brother Aaron and uh, Sister Grace uh, for the dedication of their baby. Next Sunday, there will be couples meeting after the service. The topic will be knowing and understanding the emotional and the sexual needs of in your spouse for emotional balance. Praise the Lord. So, our sisters, uh, charity, Amate, Fiona, and Esther Hansen will be handling uh, that meeting. Charity, Next two Sundays, which will be the 4th of February, there will be the one-year anniversary celebration of our late brother, Emmanuel Ako Soa. A review of that on the Saturday preceding the Sunday, which is Saturday, the 3rd of February, there will be laying of reef ceremony uh, where he was buried at La Cemetery at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. on the 3rd of February. And then on the um, it's Sunday, the 11th of February, again, there will be another child naming and educational service. For the baby of brother Obed and sister Lizzie Sowa. Oh, Sunday, 11th February. Coming Friday, which will be the 27th of uh, January, there will be an all night service prayer meeting here. So let's all take note. Friday coming, 27th of January. Then also, uh, effective from Sunday, 4th of February, we'll be having two services on the first Sunday of every month. Effective uh, Sunday, the 4th of February, and through the rest of the year, uh, I'm just giving this announcement, but the pastor will come and elaborate more on it at the end of the service. We'll be having two services at the, on the first Sunday of every month. There will be a morning service, and there will be a late afternoon service where we'll have communion. So yep. after service, just uh, remain in your seat. Uh, the church members and pastor will come and speak to that. 
a finishing a course of a Bellamy Uduba, a chong. Kaja, no chino, Kaya, Niji Tao ba, ye, we can crawl by ye, no fen you me, or what not be in you, or I've dumped not living no, I've been a Kashanino, Nishane, Abab, or Abadu Chopunoi. The afternoon service will be from 3 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. So let's take note of that. Uh, this is an announcement. Sister Rhoda Duhu, uh, brother Kenka's wife, gave birth to a baby boy on the 5th of January in the U.S. Amen. And the name of the boy is King David Adam Duho. So God bless them. Uh, this is a thanksgiving note from our sister Ruby Ashiti. I wish to express my sincere thanks to the Almighty God, the ministers, the church officers, and the entire congregation for their support during the funeral and burial service of my late mother. Saints, may God richly bless you all. Sister Ruby Ashiti, she has a love offering, Thanksgiving offering. And then you want me to Ruby Ashiti, aka Eda, who's a new church, Eda, software, Casafuno Cole, Casavo BFN, she can't. You look about more you or Boale, you can't in your phone. So God bless you. You charge off, and I want to just uh, uh, recognize this visitors in our midst this morning. We have brother Aaron and Sister Grace Azu relations and friends. Can we see you? you are coming. Amen. God bless you all. And we are glad to have you in our midst. We've got Sister Jane Asari from Kaswa Church. Sister Jane, God bless you. You also, we've got Sister Faustina Jemfua, also from the Kaswa Church. Sister Christabel Enim, also from the Kaswa Church. We want to welcome all of you. We have Sister Abigail Otu from Teshi. Sister Abigail, God bless you. We have God Brother Bright. Bright. Dubaza from Bride of Christ Tabernacle at Ashalaja. God bless you. And we've got uh, Brother Godwin Ose and then Brother Daniel Tetebo from Eagle Age Tabernacle. Brother Godwin, Brother Daniel, God bless you. Glad to see you. And we've got Brother Robert Ducey. Brother Robert Ducey. Uh, Where's Brother Robert? God bless Robert you. Robert Ducey, we over. And, and we have uh, Brother Otu, the husband of Sister Abigail, also from Teshi. Sorry to have missed you. Amen. So we want to welcome every one of you visitors okay. into our okay. Here we don't have any book but the Bible. We don't have any creed but Christ. And we don't have any law but the love of God. Amen. Amen. So we stand to our feet. We want to sing love of God as we prepare our hearts for the word of God. Number 93.
According to the Bible in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, when the people said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, Repent, every one of you, and be baptized. So baptism only comes after repentance. I wonder what that baby little girl that hardly knows where she is will be able to repent of. So we like to do things the Bible way. In the Gospel of Saints, Mark chapter 10 and verse 13, this is what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did. And they brought their young children to him that he should touch them and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. That is what our Lord did. And that is what we do here. We dedicate the babies into the hands of the Lord. God is the giver of every good gift. And so once the parents recognize that God has blessed them with the gift of life, they bring their children to the house of the Lord and we dedicate them into the house of the Lord for God's divine protection upon the lives of the children believing and trusting the Lord that as they raise up their children in the fear of the Lord when they get to the age of accountability knowing right from wrong they on their own, on their own, out of their own free will, give their lives to the Lord and serve Him. So that is what we're going to do this morning. Uh, the name is Tessa in Ghana, which means rock. Draw me in Adamwe, which means grace. Niji Achezi Azu. Praise the Lord. Azu. Amen. So Tessa drew me Achezi Azu. Amen. So that's the one game. Don't worry. When I had my first daughter, I was so excited. I gave her a very long name. Anna for grace. Mercy love. Then name her after my mother. Mami Mami Before that, Jay So you can imagine how long the name is. But we shorten it for her passport. So God bless you all. So wherever you are, we want to pray for Tessa Adromi Achendi Azu. Pray and ask that God will bless her. God will give the, the parents the wisdom to raise her up in the fear of the Lord that when she grows up she will be a true reflection of the bride of Christ. Shall we bow down our heads? Wherever you are, may you bow down your heads and pray and ask for God's blessing for Shall we all pray? Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, even as we stand before your altar this morning, we 
want to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful baby girl that you've granted to our brother Aaron and our sister Grace. We want to thank you that you are the giver of every good gift. And dear Lord, they recognize what you have done for them. And therefore, Lord, they bring this baby girl before your throne of grace. Heavenly Father, to be dedicated even into your living arms. Even as Mary brought you into the tabernacle to be dedicated, we commit her into your hands. We pray that may you protect her, may you preserve her life, may you shield her against all the wickedness and the evil in the society today. We pray for good health for her all the days of her life. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that, Lord, let your spirit anoint her even right from now. Oh, yes, Lord, that as he grows up, Lord, she will grow up in the fear of the Lord. We pray for the parents. We ask that may you grant them the wisdom they need. Heavenly Father, Lord, to raise this baby girl in the fear and admonition of the Lord. If you tarry, oh God, may she grow up, Lord, to be a real example of what a true lady, a true lady, a true woman ought to be in this untoward generation. We thank you, we bless your name, provide them all the substance they need. Heavenly Father, to be able to take care of this child and all the other children. We bless your name, we give you all the praise and glory. We thank you for what you have done. Into your hands, Lord, we dedicate Tessa, Dromi, Achede, Azu for a lifetime of service in the presence of the living God. This we pray with all faith in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The love of God our rich and pure Chapter 14. Joshua, Joshua chapter 14. We want to read from verse 6 to the end. Joshua chapter 14, reading verse 6 through to the end. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gigal, and Caleb the son of Jephna. The Kenizzite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thy inheritance, and thy children forever, because thou hast wholly, wholly followed the Lord thy God. And now behold, the Lord had kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, ever since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day first call and five years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. 
Now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephthah, Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephthah, the Kenizzite, unto this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron before was uh, Kedijabah, which Abba was a great man among the Anakims. And the land had rest from war. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Shall we take our seat? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So once again, we want to welcome everybody to the service this we morning. We thank God for how far he has brought us so far in the service. And we've got to the portion where we are about to hear the word of the Lord. From the scriptures that we read, I want to title my message this morning, Claiming Our Unclaimed Divine Promises. Claiming our unclaimed divine promises. Not just in a promise, but the promise that God has given to you. Hallelujah. Hey. I believe that the time has come. If you are a I believe that the hour is here upon every Bible believing child of God. To lay claims on the divine promises that God has given to us. He's given us so many precious promises. And yet our children of God. At times we live like underprivileged people. But I want you to know my brother. I want you to know my sister. We are not underprivileged people. We are the most privileged people on the surface of the earth. Because our father is a heavenly king. Our father is the Lord of creation. Our father was the one who said, let there be light and there was light. He is the one that created the heavens and the earth by his spoken word. So don't live your life like you don't have no father, no but we have a heavenly father. Claiming our unclaimed divine was And here was Caleb. Now Caleb. Caleb wasn't even born. Or maybe he was born around the time Moses fled Egypt. No, maybe Moses. See Israel, 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 Hallelujah, because he was 40 years old. So possibly just at the time Moses ran away from Egypt. That was the time that he was born. So he didn't really experience Moses in Egypt. Maybe he was only growing up. And they were telling him stories about Moses. Remember, Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness. It was after 40 years that God called him to come back to Egypt and lead the people of God out in an exodus to the promised land. The land that God promised Abraham. When neither of them was born. Remember those that were in Egypt at the time. They 
the descendants of Abraham, Abraham none of them was born at the time. I mean, I when God told Abraham, get out of your country, I can show you, man. get out of your kindred, show me, I tell you. get out of your father's house, you and into the land that I will show thee, and I will make a great nation out of thee. When God spoke to Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12, yeah, Genesis, we'll let you none of me. those people were there. Hallelujah. None of those, Moses was not there. Even the oldest person in Egypt, uh, Israeli older person in Egypt at the time was not there. Israel, 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 Israel. But when God gives his promise, I say when God gives his yeah, promise. Hallelujah. When God gives his promise. The Bible says God watches over his word to perform the same. So none of them was there. But God has told Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15. And verse 13. God told Abraham, when even the nation Israel had not been formed, Look, we serve a supreme God. We serve a greater God. He is an infinite God. He knows the end from the beginning. And nothing happens on this earth without his knowledge. If you are a Christian, there is no accident in your life. I said, if you are a Christian, there is no accident in your life. Because the Bible, the word of God, tells us as Christians that the footsteps of the righteous, the footsteps of the righteous, they are ordered by the Lord. Every step that you take, Wherever you find yourself, it is God directing your footsteps. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. So before they even landed in Egypt, God had told Abraham in Genesis 15, verse 13. And he said to Abraham, No of a surety. No of a certainty. No of a certainty. No of a surety. I Jehovah God. I am the one making this statement. I am not a man that I should lie. I am not a man that I should repent of what I, I said. Have I said it? And shall I bring it not to pass? That is the God that we serve. And so when you serve this living God, I say when you serve this living God, oh, there's nothing to fear. Hallelujah. There is nothing to fear. Do people fear this? They fear that. They fear that. I remember one time at my workplace. Several years ago. Somebody came and said, Oh, director. Oh, be careful the chair that you are sitting in. Because people have done something to the chair. I said, If my God cannot protect me, in sitting in that chair. If my God cannot protect me in sitting in that chair, then I don't know the God I am serving. But I am serving a living God. And the Bible tells me that no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon that is fighting against me will ever serve. So I don't care what they have done to the no, chair. No, 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 no. I will sit in comfort do my work. You know what happened? Sadly, yeah. the lady passed on. The lady had passed on. The one that was trying to tell me when that. Me that I I hallelujah. She had rather passed on. And I am still here. 
by the grace of the Lord. So if you are a child of God, there is nothing to fear when you have committed your ways into the hands of God. Lord. When you have surrounded your ways to the no, hands no, of the Lord, I said there is nothing to fear. So God was telling Abraham, for sure, for certainty, your seed will be a stranger in a land that is not his. And they shall serve them. And they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I, Jehovah, will judge that nation. And afterwards, shall they come out of that nation. So before they even ended up in Egypt, God has already charted the course. God has already charted the course. And so here they found themselves there. Moses tried to do the work of a deliverer. But when it is not God's time, it's always going to be a failure. God does this in his time. So Moses ran away. I believe around the time he ran away, that was when Caleb was born. Because when he came back, Caleb was now 40 years. And maybe he had so much about deliverance. Oh, the deliverance that ran away. Oh, but when Moses met Jehovah, when a man meets God, when a woman meets God, oh, there is something about that woman. There is something about that that man. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, that we we'll all get to a place where we we'll meet Jehovah. Where we we'll encounter Jehovah. So Moses comes back. Not with a great army, but with a shepherd's stick. Oh, hallelujah. Just like today. Come on, man. Maybe somebody leaves Ghana, go to America, America, and all he has is maybe a machine gun. So I am going to take over America. When they've got all this missiles, when the president has got all this nuclear arsenal, you, you look insane. Remember in Acts chapter 7, the Bible tells us when Stephen was preaching to them, he told them this about Moses. In Acts chapter 7 verse 22, and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. He was a learned man. When you talk about everything in Egypt, Moses knew all of it. And was mighty in words and deeds. So he knew the strength of the nation of Egypt. Moses, he knew the strength. So when God told him, I am sending you to Moses, back to Egypt, Exodus 3 and 4, Moses kept giving excuses. Because he knew what Egypt was. He knew the might of Egypt. And God said, I'm going to send you. And God did not give him an army. He did not give him an army. It was just a shepherd. It was just a shepherd. Oh, but Moses was convinced. He was convinced in his heart because he saw something that science could not explain. He saw something that science could not explain. He saw a bush was burning, but the bush was not consumed. And the voice spoke to him. Moses. 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 Even he knew his name. Oh, hallelujah. Don't think God doesn't know your name. Jehovah knows your name. He calls us by name. He said, Moses. 
I am the God of Abraham. Abraham Jimmy. The God of Isaac. Isaac Jimmy. The God of Jacob. Jacob Jimmy. I have come down. Because the 400 years that he gave. The 400 years was up. So God was watching over his no, no, no. And when maybe everybody has forgotten about it, God has not forgotten his divine promise to Abraham. So he came down. Hallelujah. And Moses came back. Moses And the Exodus began. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It was a terrible time for the Egyptians. It was one plague after the other. One plague after the other. One plague after the other. Until the final plague, God killed the firstborn of their human beings, of their cattle, of their animals. God killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just to bring about his word. Amen. 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 And so Caleb saw all of these things. He was a witness of the power of God in Egypt. He saw God in action in Egypt. Look, when God wants to do something, nobody can stop him. It doesn't matter how many they can arm themselves. He's got so many arsenals. He's got so many weapons. He can decide to shoot. Take the head by earthquake. <laughs> what will your nuclear missiles do? When God is shaking the earth, when God is rocking the earth, and all your nuclear bunkers are beginning to collapse, you can say, Oh, your nuclear bunkers are beginning to collapse. What about when he sends flood waters? How are you going to defend the flood waters? What about when he sends storms? How are you going to defend storms? Our God is the most powerful living being, living savior that we can serve. Amen. Amen. Egypt thought they were prepared. Well, Egypt, like But Moses came. And one after the other. He one after the other one plague after another plague he kept destroying them he kept weakening them oh hallelujah and to the last plague Pharaoh said call me Moses I've had enough you and your people leave just leave and go just leave and go Oh, hallelujah. Amen. They left and they were okay. there. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Caleb was there when they Caleb, left. Caleb, yeah, me, 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 he witnessed me. all the miracles. He, he witnessed me. all the power of God. And when they got to the Red Sea, oh, hallelujah. Korah did that. I've been asleep. Korah, even when you watch the movie, The Ten Commandments, Pharaoh said, oh, God is a poor general. He's leading his children. And he doesn't leave them in a way of retreat. God's army, the word retreat is not We only march forward. We only move forward. So Caleb was there. When Israel started crying out. Oh, Moses, why have you brought us? Are there no graves in Egypt that you have brought us to die in the wilderness? Moses says, stand still. Oh, my brother, no matter what you are going through, I say stand still because the salvation of the Lord, the salvation of Jehovah is about to reveal to you. Moses says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
God came on the scene. He parted the Red Sea. And Israel walked on dry land. Hallelujah. The sea themselves became their guard of honor. I said the Red Sea formed a guard of honor. Hallelujah. There was no fiscal wars. But God parted the Red Sea. And Israel walked on dry land. Israel, yes, and they crossed the sea. Caleb was there. He, he was, was witnessing the power of God. God. He saw that this God that they said, this God that Israel said, he's a mighty God. He's a powerful God. Hallelujah, there's none like him. Oh, there's none like the God of Israel. And all throughout the world that is. As they journeyed in the wilderness, they got to a place in Numbers chapter 13 where Moses chose 12 spies. One spy from every tribe to go and spy out the land. To go and see whether what he has told them about the land that he is taking them to a land, a land no. that is flowing with milk and honey, to where find out whether those things be so. So in Numbers 13, and from verse 21, so they went up, no, and they searched the land from the wilderness of Zin, no, unto Rehob, as men come, to Hamath. Verse 23, and they came unto the brook of Eshkol, and cut down from thence a branch, a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bend between two upon the staff. No, men, no, tell it again. Like I often say. It's not this tiny grave that they sell in the supermarket. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. It took two adult men to carry a bunch of grapes upon a staff between them. Oh, they have never seen a grave like that before. But it took two people to carry it. And they brought it in. And they saw all that was in the land. Hallelujah. And also they saw the world cities. They saw the children of the Anarchists. Oh, the giant people. The real macho men. They also saw them in the land. And so when the people came back, they have to give a report to Moses. And they went and came to Moses, verse and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them. Hallelujah. And unto all the congregation. And they showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them and said, We came to the land where you sent us Moses. And surely, and absolutely, and surely, that land it flows with milk and honey. And this is the evidence of it. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. They saw what God said. That the land is flowing with milk and honey. Caleb saw it. Caleb now. Caleb was a witness. Caleb, nah. Joshua was a witness. That whatever God said, it was exactly the way God said it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. The cities are warm. The cities are very great. And even the west of it. 
Don't the women. We saw the children of Anna. And in our own eyes, in our own eyes, we had to do like this. To actually see their hands. We were like grasshoppers. As if when God gave the promise. As if when God gave the promise. He didn't know that the cities were war. As if when God gave the promise, he didn't know that, hallelujah, the cities were very great. As if when God gave the promise, he didn't know that the children of Anak would be there. We serve an infinite God. He didn't have to tell them about those things because he had already taken care of them. Hallelujah. He didn't have to tell them because he has already taken care of it. Praise the Lord. Amen. The cities were warm. The cities were very great. We saw the children of Anak there. And while all of this was going on, trying to discourage the children of Israel to discourage them. You see, God has brought us out. Then now what he said about the land is so true. But you forgot about something. Oh, God never forgets. Our God never forgets. Our Jehovah never forgets. Don't think that this trouble that I am going through. Oh, God never told me about it. Because he has already taken care of it. It should never be your worry. We worry about unnecessary things. Your worry cannot change the situation. Your worry will not change the situation. All you've got to do is to take it to the Lord. That is all you can do as a child of God. Worry less. And believe God more. And while all of this was going on, that was when Caleb showed his true color. The set and Caleb the people. And said, let's go up at once and possess it. For we are well able. We are well able. We are well able to overcome it. We are well able to overcome it. It's not going to be the strength of Israel. It wasn't the strength of Israel that brought us out of Egypt. It was God that brought us out of Egypt. And if God brought us out of Egypt, and he parted the rest of the earth, oh, who are these Canaan? Who are these Jebusites? Who are these Hittites? Who are these Amalekites? Let them go up at once. Because our God is with us. I say our God is with us. I say Jehovah is with his blood. Jehovah is with the believer. And therefore there is nothing to fear. Praise the name of the Lord. But the man that went up with him. They said. We are not able to go up against the people. Wanye, wanye, wanye. For they are stronger than we. Yeah, the people are stronger than we. The people were stronger than we. But Caleb wasn't looking at Caleb their strength. Caleb was not looking at the strength of the nation. He, he was looking at the power behind Israel. He was thinking about the power of the most I got. So he said, let's go up at once. And possess the land. And when they went through the land, he walked through the land. He walked everywhere. They walk everywhere. They search the land. And when Moses left, and God came and gave the commission to Joshua. Oh, he said, be strong. And be of good courage. For to these people. Thou shalt divide an inheritance unto them. Hallelujah. Moses, my servant, is gone. But Caleb, I want, hey, Joshua, I want you to take over. And in Joshua chapter 3, Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, 
Joshua 1 verse 3. God told Joshua, every place that the sole of your feet shall tread on, I have given it to you. And so when they went to search the land, they walked through the land. Remember, full priest is possession. Full priest is, they walked through the land. And wherever the sole of their feet has tread God said, I have given it to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so when Joshua, Caleb, Caleb, Caleb spoke what was in his heart. Look, in Numbers 13, the people even wanted to stone him. Hallelujah. Because they brought evil reports. But Caleb believed. And Moses spoke to Caleb. Say, because of what you have done, because of where you have stood, oh, there's an inheritance in the promised land for you. So they journeyed 45 years. And they got to the land. And when they have settled in the land, Caleb knew. Caleb knew. He had something to claim. Oh, hallelujah. He had something to claim. There was a promise to him. A promise from God's servant. He knew Moses did not say that of himself. But because of the way he wholly spoke from his heart. That God is able to give us the land. Moses said Caleb, Moses, okay, Caleb, you are going to have that land. And so when they settled in the land, Caleb was not happy. Hallelujah. He went to Joshua, representing the Holy Ghost. Representing the Holy Ghost. Oh, Church of the Living God. I say Church of the Living God. We need to recognize where we have so got you it. Say, We have a law enforcer. And the law enforcer is the Holy Ghost. All you got to do is speak to the Lord. The Bible says, He is the high priest of our profession. The high priest of our confession. Christ is waiting on you. The advocate is waiting on you. For you to make your confession. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Caleb went to Joshua. Say Moses swear to me. Say surely the land where you are, your feet have trod. Where you have already stepped. When you were searching the land. And you were walking through the land. land. And you were hiding everywhere. And you were spying out the land. land. Oh, his footprints were touching the land. He didn't go and run back quickly back to Moses. But he spied out the land. And not knowing wherever he was spied, wherever he was stepping on, wherever he was stepping on, oh, God was watching. Oh, God is watching you also. Wherever he was stepping on, and God said, Caleb, Caleb, wherever the soul of your foot has fallen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall be yours. It will be your inheritance. And that of your children forever. Because you have follow, you have, you have wholly followed the Lord. And the Lord has kept me this 45 years. It in vain God has gifted me 45 years. I am now 85. But Joshua wants you to understand. I am as strong as I was 40 years oh, old. Hallelujah. Amen. So now I want my promise. I am going to claim my promise. I know the Anakims are there. I know the giants are there. But God gave me that promise. And the God who gave me that promise 
I am able to go and claim the land. Like we are able to possess the land. Oh, from Jordan to the coast. Though so the giants be in the land. Though the giants be in the land. God will surely give us the land. That was the faith of Caleb. Claiming our unclaimed divine promise. So Caleb went. And claim the land that belongs to him. Hallelujah, because it has been promising. It was a divine promise. And so he went back to God. Say, Lord, you gave me this promise. Lord, I am now ready. Jehovah, I am now ready to claim my possession. And that is where the believer must be now. We have to come to that point now to start to claim our unclaimed divine promises. Start to claim our unclaimed divine promises. The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. Exodus 20, verse 1. Exodus 20, verse 1. Exodus 20, verse 1. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 10. In Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. For the law having a shadow of things to come. For the law having a shadow of things to come. Hallelujah. For the Lord having a shadow of good things to come. And the prophet has taught us. Hallelujah. That the natural types the spirit. Whatever happens in the natural. Is always a type of something God is doing spiritually. Hallelujah. We see the sun. In the morning, it's very young. It's, it's not very warm. And then gradually, as it travels through the day, oh, at noon time, it has its peak. It has its strength. And then by 3 o'clock, it starts going weaker and weaker. And then by 6 p.m., the sun sets. But that is not the end of it. The next day, it rises up again. It's just the journey of a man. It's just the journey of a man. We are born feeble, like we have, had an education. Oh, but we grow up to our youthful days full of strength, full of energy. And then soon you pass your middle age. And then you begin to slow down. And before you know, the sun has set on you. But that is not the end. There's resurrection after that. Because Jesus rose up. And we know that there's resurrection. Blessed be the name of Amen. the Lord. The natural types of spiritual. The prophet told us that. Let me give you this quote. In the message he preached diseases and afflictions. In paragraph 33 the prophet said. All the natural things of the earth. Type the spiritual. Everything in the natural type of spiritual. In the message demonology, everything that God has, everything in the natural, times the spiritual. I know I am a typology. And I believe that every natural thing is a spiritual. So where are we today? I love types. Because it's you never get run in the scripture. I love types. In the Bible. Because it, let, it makes you know what God is going to do. I want to come to this our day. Why we ought as believers. We ought to be claiming our unclaimed divine promises. Hallelujah. Because the nation Israel, yeah, Israel. even though God called them, yeah, that was God's natural bride. And God has a spiritual bride. And so as we see what is happening, even in the Middle East in yeah. recent times, look, Israel is now a nation. Israel, if you read Ezekiel chapter 37, when God showed a vision to Ezekiel, 
Which was the valley of dry bones. And God asked Ezekiel, will these bones live again? This was Israel's cutting. Israel taken into captivity. The nation didn't seem to exist anymore. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ezekiel said, God, you know. And God told Ezekiel to prophesy. And as Ezekiel called you to prophesy, all the bones begin to come together. Then flesh came on the bones. And eventually, breath of life came into the bones. So what was a valley of dry bones? That valley came to life again. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So in Ezekiel 37, Reading from verse 11. Who could it be? Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dry. And our when hope is lost. And we are cut off of our parts. Therefore, prophesy. And say unto them, Thus sayest the Lord. Thus sayest the Lord. Behold, oh my people, I will open up your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened up your graves, oh my people, Amen. And brought you out of your grace. And shall put my spirit in you. And you shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. And you shall know that I, the Lord, has put me. And performed it. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to resurrect this nation. Oh, hallelujah. In the book of Hosea, chapter 6. I'm going to resurrect this nation. In the book of Hosea, chapter 6. In the book of Hosea, chapter 6. He said, Israel was cut. But after two days, in the third day, Hosea said, I will open up your graves. But after two days, he said, I will open up your graves. But after two days, he said, I will open up your graves. But after two days, he said, I will open up your graves. Again. And remember a day with the Lord, like Peter said. Now, it's a thousand years. So when Hosea was prophesying, God was saying, Yes, Israel was cutting. After two thousand years, in the third millennium, I will bring them back. When Hosea prophesied, it was seven hundred and eighty. But in 1948, Israel was proclaimed a nation. The star of David, David the oldest flag in the earth, started to fly again. They had their seat at the United Nations. Oh, the oldest currency in the world. The shakers was revived again. Israel is a nation now. They've got their own parliament. They've got their own president. They've got a nationhood now. No, and even though they got a nationhood, we read in the book of Amos chapter 9, listen to what the word of God says. We are speaking about claiming our unclaimed divine promise. In Amos chapter 9, Reading from verse 13. Behold, the days come. See the Lord. That the plow might overtake the reaper. And the treader of graves, him that soweth seed. The mountain shall drop sweet wine. 
And all the hills shall melt. And I'll bring again the captivity of my people Israel. And they shall do the waste cities. 1948. When Israel was declared a nation, the whole land was a desert waste. Look at the Middle East now. Israel is one of the largest exporters of grapes. Talk about scientific advancement. Talk about cyber security. Talk about all the things that you can imagine. That small nation has produced more Nobel Prize winners than any country in the world. When God is with you, it's unlimited what you can do. I'll bring the captivity of my people, Israel. They shall build the west cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit thereof. It was Israel, Israel are you? that invented drip irrigation. You can just pray water everywhere. People will spray water everywhere. But Israel knew the hallelujah. Israel knew a lack of a Israel knew lack of a So they invented drip irrigation. No, the water only drops at the root. So they don't water juicelessly. Hallelujah. Amen. And that desert land. They planted the waste cities. Verse 15. And I will plant them upon their land. And they shall no longer be pulled out of their land. Which I have given them. Fear the Lord. God God said. I have given them the land. When did he give them the land? Let's go back to Genesis chapter 15. When God called Abraham, and Abraham walked with the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. God caused Abraham to sleep. And Abraham walked. And God showed Abraham the land. In Genesis chapter 15. Let's read from verse 18. In the same day. The Lord made a covenant with Abraham, Abraham saying unto thy seed, Have I given this land from the river of Egypt? Egypt. You know what the river of Egypt is? That is the river now. People think that we are sitting some worse battle in the Middle East now. People think we are seeing some worse battles in the Middle But something greater than that is going to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what God was telling Abraham. Hallelujah. Be, uh, amen. From the river of Egypt. Egypt, far. Onto the great river Euphrates. Can you just project the map onto the screen for me, please? I just want you to know that where Israel is today, where Israel is now, is only about 2% of what God actually promised Abraham. This is where the knowledge the top red one is the river Euphrates. That goes through Iraq, Syria, Syria, through Turkey, all the way And God said to Abraham, I have given you this land. Oh, hallelujah. 
Show me the next map. Let me show. So you can see. God, this is the land God promised Abraham. From the river of Egypt. Then through Euphrates. I have given you the land. Israel is just that tiny land. But just said Abraham. I have given you the land. The nation is right now. It's only about 8,000 square meters. Square mass, rather, 8,000 square meters. That whole red is about 300,000 square miles. So the land that Israel today occupies. It's only about 2%. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. There will be room for everybody in the millennium. No. Hallelujah. I tell you what, we, we, we only think about that tiny nation. But, but this was the spans of land she, she God promised Abraham. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's read it. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. Uh, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river Euphrates. And then God goes on and, and demarcates the boundary of the land. And so today, Israel is claiming their land. Israel Only in that small portion. The valley of dry bones is now alive. Hey, hey, he will plant them in their land. Hallelujah. And no one should pull them out. In Genesis 17. Yeah, Genesis, verse 7 to 8. Genesis 17, verse 7 to 8. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. And thy seed after thee. In their generation. For an everlasting covenant. To be a God unto thee. And to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee. And to thy seed after oh, thee, okay, Joseph, eh? the land wherein you were stranger. Oh, the land of Canaan. For an everlasting possession. Okay. In the book of Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah will let you when God says anything. He means exactly what he has said. In the book of Jeremiah 31. Let's read from verse 35. Thus says the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a, a light by night. The God that divided the sea when the waves round. The Lord of hosts is his name. So God said, have you seen the sun? No. I made the sun. Me. I made the moon. I made the stars. Listen to what he says now. If those ordinances depart from me, say the Lord. If the sun refuses to rise, if the moon refuses to shine, if the waves break their boundaries, then the seed of Israel shall cease from being a nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Before you think about Israel ceasing to be a nation, 
God is saying the day the sun will refuse to rise the day the stars will refuse my way all the ordinances are put in place and the ordinances fail then Israel will cease to be okay, Israel. But as long as those ordinances, as long as those ordinances, as long as the sun obeys my wife, as long as the waves obey my wife, as long as the moon obey my wife, as long as creation obeys my wife, Israel shall be established by Israel. So be careful what you say about Israel. Israel. He told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. I will bless them that bless you. And I will curse them that curse you. And at certain times, our human emotions take over what is happening. And people are saying also against Israel. Israel, oh, have a Palestinians have died. Yeah. God got rid of all the firstborn in Egypt. The Israel. Come for the Exodus to take. But I feel Israel be Oh hallelujah. Yeah. God. God rid of all the firstborn of every living Israel. creature. Read Romans chapter 9. Where Paul, God, God, Paul wrote. Where God told Moses. For this purpose I raised that Pharaoh. That my words might be made. And you say that, then we find fault with God. And Paul said, who are you, man? Can the clay say to the potter, why have you made me this way? Our God is a sovereign God. Verse 37. That says the Lord. If heaven above can be measured. You know how we measure the, 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 the universe? The mile on earth is too small. The mile, the mile on earth. What we call a mile on earth is too small. So when they measure the universe, they measure it in light years. The distance, that is the unit of measurement. The unit of measurement is called a light year. Every second, every second, when we bat a second, light travels 186,000 miles. That's the distance light travels in a second. 186,000 miles. So you can calculate the distance light travels in a year. And in the universe, that is the unit of measurement. So you're talking about one light year. So God is any, saying, any condition. God is God saying, if the heaven above can be measured, and the foundation of the earth can be searched out, oh, God is throwing a challenge. If we can measure the heavens, then I will also cast off all the seed of Israel. But nobody can measure the heavens. It shows you where Israel plays in the promises of God. 
So the current crisis that is going on. No, 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 Israel. In the Middle East. Yeah, 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 Israel. We know how the, the Hamas people attack Israel on October 7th. But the body, Hamas, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, Israel be. And how Israel is just say they have to destroy Hamas. They have to destroy Hamas. All along in the whole world, they have been talking about a two-state solution. But last week, the Prime Minister of Israel, Ben Temenyeta, Israel, he and Yolo. So we're not going to go ahead and two states to this. We're claiming all our land. And the defense minister said, no. when they have finished destroying Hamas, they are not going to give the Gaza Strip to Hamas anymore. They are not going to give the Gaza Strip to Hamas anymore. It will be under the rule of Israel. Why am I saying this? They are claiming their divine promises. The land that others want to part. And if we go back to the the, the, the map. That is even only a tiny bit. But the promise that God gave Abraham. I said the promise that God gave Abraham. All of that land I believe is going to be reclaimed. I said I believe because if God told Abraham that I have given this land to you and your seed after you. I said you that is what God said. No, don't okay. if about me. He's going to bring his word to if me. You, about me. you think, Brother Isaac, you are just be well, beside yourself. Uh, yes, yes, let me be crazy for what the word of God has said. <laughs> that is the land that God promised Abraham. <laughs> and he said it's an everlasting promise. <laughs> an everlasting <laughs> covenant. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, if man. God said it, he will surely bring it to pass. Amen. 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 They are claiming their lands. And we know the bride of Christ. We are also the seed of Abraham. Oh, hallelujah. It's not only the natural seed, yeah, but we are also the seed of Abraham. And so if the natural is claimed, hallelujah, they are claiming their unclaimed divine promises. When God claimed the bride of Christ, oh, it's time we recognize what is our possession. What divine promises God has given to us. In the message, the choosing of law for grace. The prophet said this. Hallelujah. But as it was with Israel naturally, so is it with Israel spiritually. We are Israelite because we are the seed of Abraham. That Israelite is not that which is of the flesh, but that which is of the spirit. We being dead in Christ, take on Abraham's seed, and are heirs with Abraham according to the promise. In Genesis chapter, uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is every man that hanged on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham. That the blessing of Abraham. That the blessing of Abraham. So we are not only talking about a natural seed. There is going to be a millennial city. There is going to be a headquarters on the earth. Yes, one Just like God, He had a garden. Of Eden. Yeah, Eden. 
Adam had the whole world. Everywhere But God made a special place for us. It was in Eden, east of Eden. Yeah, Eden. And that is where he came to meet God. Yes, and in the new heaven and the new earth, there is going to be a city for square. There is going to be a city for square. Look, Abraham looked for a city Abraham, whose maker and builder was God. But that city has not yet come. But it's going to come one of these days. You love the Lord? Amen. Amen. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. In verse 26 of Galatians 3, the Bible reads, for ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. As many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. God nor free. Male or female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Then you are Abraham's seed. And as according to the promise. So it means, it's not only the natural seed. But, but every true believer. You've got a claim of the land as well. Hallelujah. I say you've got a claim on the land as well. Because God promises to Abraham and to his seed after him. Abraham, can you say to me, yes, Amen. Claim me. No, our unclaimed divine promise. What God has promised us. It is time to lay claims on it. God has promised us. It is time to lay claims on it. It is time to lay on it. Hallelujah. Every promise in the book is ours. Every promise that God has given to Israel. In Genesis chapter 17. We read that. 7 to 8. I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generation for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee and I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land where if you are a stranger the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession Everlasting possession. Hallelujah. Amen. Israel is claiming what belongs to Israel. Israel. There will always be a fight. When you are claiming your divine possession. They didn't just watch the promised land. And they took a hold of the promised land. They have to fight every city. They have to fight for the city of Jericho. They have to fight for every piece of that land. Even though it's a divine promise, we got to fight for every divine promise. But rest assured, because it's a divine promise, victory is assured. Amen. Amen. Listen to what the prophet said. So we are also possessors of that promise. That is also our inheritance. You know in the millennium, when Christ comes down, he's going to establish his kingdom on earth for a year, for a thousand years, and he's going to be the land that he, God, promised Abraham. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. God's promises can never fail. In the message, believers doubt this, as Christians, we need to recognize what God has done. It is time for the bride of Christ 
wake up and start claiming I won't claim divine possession. There are divine promises that God has given to us. And that's why we gathered here yesterday. There's the promise of the Father. Which is the gift of the Holy Ghost. And God bless all those that were able to make it yesterday. Praying and crying unto the Lord. That Lord fill my vessel with the Holy Ghost. That is a divine promise. That you ought to lay your claim upon. Amen. Amen. The prophet said. My grandfather rode an ox cart. I am driving a V8. Look, when I was in Australia, in Australia, I traveled with one brother, Michael. And he was demonstrating to me driverless car. Driverless car. The <laughs> prophet spoke <laughs> about <laughs> it. Me, John, me, in 1933, but the Mikey has got the latest Kia. And so he was taking me to a place to preach. I said, Brother Isaac, look at this. The car has got senses. So when we are about to enter a cave, and we are traveling over 100 kilometers per hour, so I'm going to leave the steering wheel. So he left the steering wheel. And for 30 seconds, the car was just navigating the bend. The car was just navigating the bend. Because they have built it in senses. That follows the road. Knowledge shall increase. And when knowledge increases, the coming of the Lord is at So the prophet is saying, his parents rode an ox cart. I am driving a V8. My son will fly a jet plane. We are moving on. That is what religion ought to be. We cannot be where we were yesterday. We have got to be moving on to to a higher ground of the Lord. We cannot just say we are message believers. Every day we are message believers. We ought to be moving higher and higher. Like we sing the song. Every run goes higher. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. And every run goes higher and higher. That must be your Christian experience. God help us all. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what religion ought to be. The coming of the Lord is at hand. The church ought to be moved into their powers. Science can only climb so far. And then it has to drop off. But we have got on top. See what or not? On top. Source. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother, you have got on top sauce. Sister, you have got Amen. on top sauce. Church, we have got on top sauce. The source is Jehovah God himself. He's unlimited. He's infinite. That is the on top, on top resource that we have. It's time to claim. Our unclaimed divine promise. God made a promise. Regardless of whether you were born or not. When he made a promise, he made a promise. He made a promise. He made a promise. It's time to claim. 
Hallelujah. Amen. All that is going on. I remember one of the ministers of Israel said. Israel, he made to clear all of them from the Gaza. And uh, maybe they will resettle them in the Republic of Congo. <laughs> it caused such a row. But when God is fulfilling his will, it will always cause a disturbance. It will always cause a disturbance. It wasn't an easy thing in Egypt. Hallelujah. Amen. We've got on top sources. That's never been touched. Of power unlimited. Of God. Then we ought to be moving into. We are living a million miles under our privilege. Tonight, of privileges of Christians to be enjoyed. We are not tapping into it. Oh, every day we will look at ourselves. Oh, I am this, I am that. You are not this, you are not that. You are a child of God. You are a daughter of God. You are a son of God. It is time we rise up above that you are blessed. 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 And claim what belongs he to us. He has made divine promises for us. It's about time we start claiming. I say it's about time we start claiming. Hallelujah, Brother Brown said. I feel ashamed of myself when I look out here and see the institutions the sicknesses the trouble that is going on right now our church ought to be walking the streets healing the sick raising the dead casting out devils doing signs and wonders making the whole world realize that Jesus listens Hallelujah. Amen. Because we have God on top of us. Peter said, silver and gold have we. Silver and gold we don't have. But we have a resource. We have a resource. We have a resource. Silver and gold we don't have. We don't have a big church. We don't ride a Cadillac. We don't ride a Bentley. But this is what we have. We have the power of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Amen. Church, it is time to rise up. Jesus said, You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is coming. Amen. Amen. That is its divine promise. It's about time we tap into it. Listen to Brother Abraham. Talking to a woman in a wheelchair. I thought we think that he just healed everybody just like that. Listen to the prophet talking to this woman in a wheelchair. In the message, blind Bartimius. Sister in that wheelchair. On this stretcher. God promise you healing. You will have to fight every inch of it. The devil will make you fight with the sword of God. Every inch of it. But remember. Full steps is possession. Whatever your foot rests, I have given to you. Every step you can make. You know that gets me feeling religious. Full steps is possession. All the land that your feet will tread upon is the one that is yours. And it's the same to every believer. It's the same for every believer this morning. It's the same for every believer this afternoon. Anything you can take. 
Anything you can take. Any divine promise of God. And claim it. And hold it. It is yours, my God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Anything you can take. Anything I can take. Any divine promise. When you can claim it. And and hold on to it. No, oh, like Jacob held on to it. I will never let you go. I will never let you go. Until you, you, so you bless me. God. God is looking for an army at this end time. An army at this end time. An army that will take him at his own. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're not looking back. We're moving forward. In the message here, you hear. The prophet said, Why? We've got on top resources everywhere. All things are possible to them that believe. Every promise in the Bible belongs to us. Tell yourself, every promise in the Bible belongs to me. Sister, you still praying about marriage? I was Oh, say, Lord, you told me your okay, way, your, your mommy. that the man shall not be alone. I the woman commenio. shall not be alone. I Lord, commenio. I am claiming my promise. It's a divine promise it you gave me. Brother, it's a divine promise. I don't even know what the brothers are waiting for. Yes. I don't know what they are looking for. We've got wonderful sisters in this church that are of marital age. I don't know what the brothers are scared of. Are you scared to claim your divine possession? Is a divine promise to you. God told Adam it's not good for you to be alone. Go to the Lord. Stop looking at your paycheck. You never make a step. Shame on you, brother. Hallelujah. I say shame on you, brother. I don't know what they are waiting for. By the grace of God, when I married, I was doing national service. But I believe God was going to take it. I said when I married, I was doing the national service. I said when I married, I was doing Yes. It's not your ability. Of course, you want a job. But don't look at that paycheck. Just claim the divine promise. It's an unclaimed promise. Claim it for yourself, brother. That God you told Adam. It's not good for Adam to be alone. Lord, it's not good for me to be alone. I need my aid. I need my aid. And sister, shame on you. They visit the brother. And they look at the room. Okay. Yes. Hallelujah. If they didn't look at what Adam had, you need to believe. Sister, I say you need to believe. Uh, you need to believe that Lord, this is a divine promise. This year, I am trusting the Lord. I said, This year, I am trusting the Lord. That young man, you will claim your divine promise. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't want you just walking up and down, walking up and down. Why do you think God gave you that job? To waste the money? You better take a bold step. I don't even know why I'm talking about this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. We need to claim. 
our unclaimed promises. It's a promise of God. God told Adam, it's not good for you to be Adam. Adam. And so young man, it's not good for you to be Adam. At that when we talk about promises, we only think about healing, miracles. But this also one of them. I say this is also one of them. this is also one of them. It's not about a good paying job. People have got good paying jobs. And what, what, what happens to their families? Praise the Lord. Yes, brother Azu here. He will tell you when he married where he was. And every one of the brother, 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 Papa Tim, uh, 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 Pastor themselves, they will tell you. We all started by the grace of God. Somewhere. But we believed and trusted. And young man, I want you to believe and trust. And this year, we want to see more of you claiming your promises. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Don't go always buying cake by the roadside. Hallelujah. Amen. Buying takeaways. No, I take away. When God has got a special spouse. <laughs> it's time to claim our unclaimed promises. The prophet said. We have got on tap resources everywhere. Well, yeah. All things are possible to them that believe. Including marriage. It is possible. It is possible. My young brother, it is possible. Young sister, it is possible. If only you can believe, it is possible. Shall we rise to our own? I believe God. I believe God. It shall be done. Even as He said, Oh, trust and obey. Look up and say, I believe. I believe. God, 
God hate you. Are the the natural bride, Israel is claiming. Israel. Every unclaimed divine promise. We have not gotten anywhere in the message yet. We've just shown the natural types of spiritual. Israel. God has got divine promises. Divine promises for his bride. It's time we claim our unclaimed divine promises. Say, Lord, I believe you. Lord, I believe you. It shall be done even as you said. Lord, give me the faith to believe every promise that you have given. That they shall lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. That I will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, that the dead will be raised. That your power will be in the church. Lord, I am believing you tonight. Take away every doubt away from me. Take away every unbelief away from me. And help me to believe you. Shall we talk to the Lord? Lord, we are Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come before your throne of grace. Lord, one time you were walking with your disciples, you have preached the fig tree, even though it was not yet season for the fig tree to bear figs, because there were no figs on the fig tree, Lord, you cursed the fig tree. The next day, Lord, even as you pass by, your disciples drew your attention that, Lord, look at the fig tree. It was already drying up. A 
And all you told them was that have faith in God. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, that whatever or soever things they believe, if they ask of you, Lord, it will be done. Heavenly Father, oh yes, you came, Lord, you died on the cross of Calvary. And when you rose up, you gave the commission to your disciples, to the believers. You said, all power in heaven is given unto you. And because of that, you commissioned them, Lord. And we know we are an extension of that commission. Heavenly Father, your prophet is challenging us, Lord, by your word. We see natural Israel, Lord, claiming every unclaimed divine promise of them. Oh, you said the natural type, the spiritual. Lord, causes as a bride and believers, as sons and daughters of God, cause us to wake up. Cause us to arise to know that there are promises that you have bestowed upon us. Give us revelation of these promises. Lord, take away every double mindedness. Lord, take away every doubt. Take away every unbelief. And give us the grace, oh God, to start tapping onto those untapped resources. That we can begin to see the manifestations of the living God, the manifestations of the God of creation, but manifestations of the God that spoke to the seas and the waves, and they became still. We know you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are not a historical God, but you are the living God, the God of the living. Lord, help us. Whatever belongs to us to claim, to lay claims of every divine promise that you have made to us, your children. We thank you for this word. May we not continue to live under privileged lives, but help us to recognize that we are privileged to be sons and daughters of God. May we live under those privileges of being a child of God, full of the power, full of the humility, full of the love, full of the virtue, full of the patience, full of the godliness of our Father, Lord. Everything that you are, may your grace be filled in us that will be able to manifest the same. We thank you for the word. Bless it, O God. Let not your word return to you void. Let it accomplish the purpose for which you bless us with this portion of your word. We thank you and we bless you. Once again, I want to thank you for Brother Aaron and Sister Grace. I want to thank you, Lord, for baby Tessa. We commit them into your hands. May you bless them. And Lord, as we bring the service to an end, we commit the rest of the day into your hands. Even as we be living here, may you continue to order our footsteps. Watch over us for the rest of the day. Let your blessings that never abated, Lord, be our portion even now and forevermore. Bless our visitors that were able to grace the occasion today. Bless them with what they have heard. And Lord, may they think and ponder over things that you have spoken on today. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We bless your name until we meet again at your feet. May your grace, that passes all understanding, be our portion, even in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.